both of my parents came from Transylvania. My father was one of 10 children and my mother was one of six children in 1944. After the Germans invaded Hungary, the ghetto was established. My father was serving in a labor camp and my mother didn't want to go into the ghetto. So she ended up getting papers to a Swiss safe house and then we went back to this man's place and as we were ready to knock on his door, from the side, two policemen stepped out. They knew our real name. We were arrested. They pushed my mother away. A very short time later, we heard gunshots. Every time the door opened, I was hoping my mama is coming, and it never happened. Eventually, we were pushed into a big cattle car and the cattle car was filled to the maximum. When the cattle car opened, we were told we arrived to a camp called Ravensbrück. Ravensbrück was a woman's camp and over four-fifths the population perished there. They put us into a big building where they made us undress and I felt embarrassed to be naked. I put my hand front of me. An SS woman hit my hand with a whip. They uh, shaved my hair and they sprayed us with disinfectant. And that disinfectant was biting my skin. And then they gave me strange looking clothes which looked like pajamas. And an older lady went by and see me standing there. She said, young girl, how come you don't go to your barrack? I said, I don't belong to anyone. And she said, oh yes, from now on you belong to me. And call me Tanti. Tanti means like an aunt. And she and I ended up in a barrack. There were no mattresses, no covers no pillows, and that part, it's Germany, it's pretty cold in January. And my uh, tante told me several times, don't allow hatred in your life. And she said, you have to promise me, you never, never give up hope. The little girl at age eight couldn't have survived without the compassion. One night we went to sleep as usual, and when the early morning wake up came, my tante wasn't moving, and I cuddled up next to her. Other women pulled me down, and other kind strangers stepped in to watch me. The Soviet army was approaching the camp, and the camp was being liquidated, and we were pushed back in the cattle car, and this time, I ended up in Bergen-Belsen. Bergen-Belsen, when we arrived, the first thing we, we seen were big mountains of corpses. This time, we were assigned to a place to sleep. We didn't have any more bunk beds or anything. We slept on the concrete floor, and it was so cold and so infested. One day I sneaked out from the barrack and it, the sun was shining, kind of blinding me. And somebody picked me up and I could see tears in the man's eyes. And he put me down. He reached in his pocket and gave me a chocolate bar. It was April 15, 1945 and we were liberated by the British. And I went to Czech Republic and then with a train to Budapest. My father spoke many languages. He informed me I have a new mother and a new little brother. I'm 10 years old. 
and President Eisenhower had a special program at the time. People who studied science got early acceptance to the USA. My new mother had a brother who lived in Van Nuys. And uh, uh, on a blind date, I met the other Holocaust survivor. Four weeks later, he proposed. Four weeks later, we got married. And the dream of having a family became a reality. We had four children together. Seeing injustice around you. If you keep silent, that the people who put it on you will continue. But if you happen to speak up, many times it puts an end to it. And I really ask multiple times students, don't be a silent observer.